Greetings everyone, so today I want to talk about the pain you have to go through if you decide to change your Wi-Fi password, all depending on how many devices you have to reconnect. Okay, so if you're considering upgrading your Wi-Fi, because I just recently did mine. As a matter of fact, I talked about it in the previous video. Now, the pain level of switching your Wi-Fi or upgrading to a new Wi-Fi can go from a 1 to a 10. And that all depends on how many devices you have to reconnect. Now, it's possible to just upgrade your router to a new router, whatever kind you get, and then use the same ID number, you know, that Wi-Fi name, and the password and everything probably picks up. I'm gonna say probably because you might have one or few items that doesn't recognize the new router and decide that it's not gonna connect, which means you'd have to manually go in there and fix it. But I'm making this video because I want you to realize that it's gonna take a lot of work if you decide you wanna change the name and the password. Now, depending on how much devices that you have in your home, it's gonna take maybe an hour two or even more maybe take a day or two just to get everything reconnected for me i got devices in each and every room so that means i have to make sure i go back to those rooms and reconnect all those devices whatever it is your tv your smart assistant devices and any other things that rely on your wi-fi it could be your dyson like i have your streaming device whether it's your fire stick apple tv or whatever you have your smart thermostat your smart smoke detector if you have any of those, your smart security systems, your Wi-Fi bulbs, and the smart plugs and the smart switches, and the list goes on and on and on. So those are the things you need to consider when you upgrade it, whether you want to start off with a new ID and password or just transfer the one that you have now and plug that into the new router. So here are the plus and minus of choosing either or. The plus side of changing your SSID, which is the Wi-Fi name, and the password, you're starting off at a clean slate. So if your neighbor has figured out how to get into your Wi-Fi by guessing your password or whatever it is because you made it simple, then now you don't have to worry about them reconnecting to the new router because they won't know the name and the password. And if you make a new password, make it a little bit more complicated so they won't figure that out. Because being an IT guy myself, I have figured out other people's password based on the name. There was one that was named China. And I know China has a lot of tsunamis because they have more tsunamis than anything else. That's what the password was. So all I did was type in the word tsunami and it let me into their Wi-Fi all because they used the word China. So smart guys like me can figure those things out because it's common for people to tie in the name with the password to make it easy for them to remember. So make it complicated to where somebody just can't figure it out. Write it down, put it in your jewelry box, put it in your desk drawer, put it in your pantry, put it somewhere. But unless they break into your house, they'll never get that password. So that's the plus side of it. You will knock off anybody who has figured out how to tap into your Wi-Fi because now you have a brand new password to log into your Wi-Fi. And I would change the name to, to even make it more complicated because your neighborhood can be full of different Wi-Fi names. But if you change the name, now it's going to be harder for them to figure out if that's yours or not. Now, the big minus is you have to go through, like I said, and reconnect all your devices, which means some of your devices won't automatically just give you the ability to change the password. Some of them, you'd have to probably go through the process of trying to set them up all again, like when you first got the device. So that means you probably have to remove it from the account that you have signed up or the app that is connected to, and then reconnect it to the account or the app based on how you set it up in the first place. So all of this is gonna take work. And the more devices you have connected to that Wi-Fi, that's more work you'd have to do. So that's the big minus of it. Cause I run into that issue every single time I have to change my Wi-Fi name. And I try to change mine on a yearly basis. I probably should have do it every six months because it gives you that extra security level. You know, it's like, some things force you to change your password because they know eventually somebody probably figure out your password. So it's just an automatic thing to just go in and change the password. Like I said, I used to do mine on a six month rotation and then I started doing it yearly. And that's because it's a lot of work just to go through and reconnect all these devices back to your Wi-Fi. So that's what deters some people of changing their Wi-Fi password because it's a lot of work to go through and reconnect everything. And unfortunately, some of the things that you have require you to pretty much set up the devices all over again because 
you have to remove that device and put it back in because a lot of these devices don't have some type of feature in the app where you can just go in and update the password. So that's the things I had to do with my lights and some other devices that require me to put them back in pairing mode. Your Amazon voice assistant device, depending on what kind you have, have to go to different steps of reconnecting them back to the Wi-Fi. I noticed that some of them pop up in the app and then let me go through the process of updating the Wi-Fi. There's one that I had to actually put in pairing mode by holding down the button that you usually press to make a request until it started blinking orange. To update the password on all the Echo Shows, all you would have to do is just go to the settings where network is and then enter the new password. If you have that two-step verification on, you would have to put in your Amazon account and then it's gonna call you and give you those numbers that it usually does so you can reconnect those device back to your Amazon account. But like I said, it's a lot of work. So just prepare yourself that if you decide to change the password, which is a good thing, like I said, that's what I'm recommending, that it's gonna take a lot of work. If you don't wanna go to all that work, just use the same name, use the same password, and then everything should pick back up. Now, if there's a few devices that didn't reconnect to the new router using the same name and password, then it won't be as much as when you change the ID and the password. Just be warned that if your neighbor has figured out your password, then you're gonna run into that same issue. They're gonna be piggybacking off your new router without you even know it. Because the more devices you have, it's gonna be harder for you to even identify some of the devices what you have. Because some of them, when you attach them to your Wi-Fi, yes, there's a list that you can go into the router and look at. But some of them have some odd names and you will probably not even recognize it's your neighbor because it might say some type of weird name with a bunch of numbers and letters that doesn't make any sense. That could be your neighbor right there, but you wouldn't even know. So I'm going to leave it up to you to decide whether you change it or keep it. I just wanted to present this to you so you will know what you have to go to if you decide to go either or. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for taking the time for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.